What's up everybody, welcome back to the channel. So today I'm gonna to be showing you how I created this really awesome portal effect inside of Blender. It's entirely in camera, no need for any camera tricks or any weird compositing after the fact. Everything works in the scene exactly how you want it to. This is possible because of the new Ray Portal BSDF in Blender 4.2, and I'll show you where you can get that in just a second. The effect is super fun, super cool, and it actually has some pretty practical uses that I've discovered since creating this. For example, if you want to create a cutout of an object, you can just push a portal through said object, and as you can see here, it actually works like the portal should, and you can get a cutout effect of the object just as if you were using, say, like a Boolean modifier, only of course without any need for costly computations or weird glitches. The effect is super fun just to play with, so without further ado, we'll jump into the tutorial. So the first thing you're going to need to do is get the Blender version that actually includes the stuff that we need. So you're going to want to go to blender.org slash download slash daily to get the daily build that actually includes the Ray Portal node. I've also put the link in the description as well. You're going to want to get this Blender 4.2.0 Alpha. If you're on Windows, you want the x64 architecture. And you can just go ahead and download that. Once it's done downloading, you will need to extract the folder. Then you can just hop into here. And we'll launch our experimental build of Blender. Then we can just go ahead and we're going to create a new file. Delete everything in the scene. We'll switch over to cycles, switch over to GPU. You may have to come in here to edit preferences and on your system, you'll have to select your graphics card. Whenever you do a new Blender build, you'll have to do this. That's all good. And now you can see GPU is actually an option. This is only available in cycles, but fortunately, as you saw earlier, the effect is super, super fast. Adding it basically doesn't even affect the actual render time for your scenes, which is very, very nice. I'm going to knock this down to 512 samples anyway. Even with the samples this high, it is going to take us no more than a couple seconds to render our scene. And speaking of our scene, let's go ahead and create some stuff for our portals to look at. I'm going to create a Suzanne head, and let's go ahead and add a Taurus, just like I had in that opening. So that way we can see that our portals are actually working. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to add a cube, and I'm going to rename this to Portal Blue, and I'll put this into a new collection. We'll just put both of our portals, blue and orange, into the same collection, name this Portals. And we're going to come over to geometry nodes. Now you can actually skip this step if you like. You can just physically build the portal shape that you want. But in my case, I'm just going to go ahead and create a circle, make it a mesh, fill it with an n-gon, give it a nice high number of vertices. Then I'm going to transform it to make it look a little bit more portal shaped. Something like that looks pretty good. And we're going to go ahead and add a set material node. I'm going to name this to portal shape for my geometry nodes modifier. And then I'm actually going to go ahead and I'm going to add another geometry nodes modifier. And we're going to name this portal transforms. Now, just to demonstrate a bit of what we're doing here, I'm going to duplicate my portal, and I'm going to put it up here. And I'll rename this to portal orange. Move this guy like so. And now what we need to do is we need to store the transformations we have applied to both of our portals. Specifically, we're going to come in here with some store named attribute nodes. We're going to change these to vector, very important, and change these to face, because we only have one face. It just keeps everything nice and constant. And we're going to grab an object info node. Now, using this, we can select the other portal, 
This way the portals can know the relative position to the other portal along with the relative rotation. So for our first attribute, we need to store the location of the other portal. That one is pretty straightforward. Then we're going to need to store the rotation of the other. Control Shift D to duplicate. And you'll see that this rotation socket is actually a purplish magenta. That is because this is stored as quaternions. So what we need to do is grab a rotation to Euler node, and this will convert our rotation data to vector data so we can transport everything nice and cleanly. Now we're gonna duplicate this again, and we're going to store this as rotation relative. You can see over here, we kept this as original. Control Shift D, duplicate this as well. We'll store this. Then one last thing we need to do is we need to duplicate this again. And we need to know the portal's own rotation. This way we don't have to use any drivers or anything like that. So we can just grab the self object node, plug this in. This obviously needs to be set to original. And we need to actually, we need to set this one to relative. Don't forget that like I did almost. We'll come up here and we're going to change this to rotation self just like so and we'll store this value and of course make sure to be saving your files always a good habit to have now in this case we have our portal orange tied to our portal blue and we need to tie our portal blue to our portal orange and that is it for the geometry nodes portion, probably the weirdest geometry nodes effect I've ever seen. And we're going to hop over into shading, jump over to rendered view, and I'm just going to slap on an HDRI. There we go. Hop back into here. And we're going to create a new material, name this to portal. And we need to make sure to assign this material to both of our portals. Now we can go ahead and delete the principal BSDF. And we're going to grab our fancy new Ray Portal BSDF. Now there are two inputs here. And by default, they make it so that you just have a transparent shader. Effectively, the Ray goes in and then it's fired again from the other side. You can see this causes some weird sort of light effects because light rays can actually just pass right through this just as they should. Unfortunately, this can introduce a bit of noise. That's why I kept us at a pretty high number of samples. Also, the number of portal passes is the same as transparency passes. So if I want my portals to say be side to side to create that infinite mirror effect, you will have to up your transparent bounces and accordingly your total bounces to a high enough number. So now by default, the direction is actually the same as if we come and grab a geometry node and a vector math node. The default passing through this is the same as the incoming vector scaled by negative one. So you can see if we plug this into the direction, nothing changes, which is good because now we know what we need to modify, at least at first. I'm going to go control H in order to hide that. And now I'm going to grab an attribute node and we're going to grab our rotation self attribute. Now we'll grab a vector rotate node and we'll set this to Euler. And the way to think about this is that the ray coming in and going out, we want to replace the going out direction with what it would be going out of were it coming out of this one. And so we want to exchange the ray's rotation in 3D space that it actually has for what it would have if it got transformed to coming out of the other portal. And the way to do that is actually really intuitive. All we have to do is remove the portal's own rotation. And then we just have to add back the rotation of the other portal. Plugging this into here, 
you can see that this gives us a really weird effect and that's because we also need to change the position. Right now it's just sort of getting fired out from the same position but in a weird angle and now it's actually a very similar piece of logic in order to get the changed position like we did with the changed direction. We're just going to grab our geometry node again and some vector math and what we need to do is we need to actually grab an object info node and an attribute node and we need our location attribute. Once again, we're just going to remove by setting this to subtract the object's own location and we're going to add the location of the second portal. And so we're just going to add this change to our position like so. And if we plug this in, you're going to see it doesn't look right. And if you take a closer look, you'll see it's almost like the portal is there. It's just rotated in 3D space. And that is because the object also needs to be rotated. The positions get affected when you rotate the object. So once again, we're going to grab ourselves a vector rotate node, set this to Euler, set this to invert, and we need to grab our rotation attributes. We're going to remove the rotation self. And this time it has to be rotated around its new location. Since this is occurring after the transform, we have to use our location attribute, not the object's actual location. Now we'll duplicate this. Keep everything nice and clean. And rotate our positions to fit with the other portal. Again, we have to rotate about the location and we have to make sure to uncheck invert here. And now you can see it's more or less working, but it's still, it's like it's trying to choose between them. It can't decide if it wants us to be a portal or just a transparent shader. And that is because the rays are being fired from the other portal right at the surface. And that's essentially giving us a floating point error where Blender can't tell if the new ray is being fired out and just hitting the surface it was emitted from versus being fired out and hitting the actual scene. So fortunately, there's actually a really easy fix for this. We're just going to go ahead and grab a vector math node and we're going to run our normal output here, set this to scale. And we're just going to off put the rays from the surface by a really tiny amount. We'll go 0 0.0001. Now if we go shift D, set this to subtract. We can plug this in here and you can see everything is, I mean, it's all working fine. The one issue you will run into though, is that once you rotate these enough, eventually you're just going to hit a point where they go black. And that is because eventually your normals get flipped and so you're offsetting it in the wrong direction. But now what we can do is we can actually just duplicate this scale, set this to dot product, and we're going to grab ourselves another vector rotate node. We'll go ahead and grab a combine XYZ, set it to one, plug this into the vector. Then we need to snag a rotation attribute again. We're going to make this rotation relative. There we go. Set that to Euler. Plug this in. And now what we can see is how aligned this vector after being rotated is with the vector it was before. Again, just plus one on the Z. And if we grab a math node and check that this is greater than zero, we can tell Blender that, okay, as long as the dot product between the vector and its rotated self is greater than zero, well, then everything is okay. Just offset it with the normal. But otherwise, invert the normal and the bam, we have fixed the problem. As you can see, you can continue to rotate this any which way you want, and you can move it around your scene, and things will not break. And yeah, that's pretty much actually the video, guys. 
This is just something really, really cool and really awesome I wanted to share with y'all. Like I said before, this is a super new node. I really want to spend some time playing around with this. I know this is going to be super useful in the future. But yeah, that's the end of the video. Thank you all so much for watching. If you want to get this project file along with a bunch of my other stuff, I do have a Patreon now. If you want to support me and support the channel, that's a super cool way to do so. I upload all of my tutorial files there, along with some projects that don't get turned into tutorials, and some other cool stuff for you guys. But yeah, with that said, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. If you have any ideas for cool stuff that can be done using this node, or you just have general ideas for videos in the future that you'd like me to take a look at, leave those in the comments below. I love to hear your guys' ideas and your thoughts. If you liked the video, consider liking, subscribing, all that YouTube jazz, and I'll see you guys in the next video.